Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft, and today we're going to have a look at creating tone and depth just using charcoal. I've got uh, some fairly smooth drawing paper to start with and some medium sized sticks of willow charcoal. The first thing we need to do is to tone the paper. Begin by just layering the paper with quite a thick amount of charcoal. When you rub it in with your finger to create the mid-tone, you will in fact take some off at the same time. So don't be too hesitant with it. And then simply using your fingers, push the charcoal into the paper. This is why a slightly smoother paper works better because you don't get too much texture on it then. It's easier to lift out. I might just pop a little bit more on there. We don't want too many gaps in at this stage. So the more even the tone, the better. So all we're going to use to create uh, tone and depth in this little sketch is the charcoal and the hard plastic eraser. So we're going to use the sharp edges now to start lifting some of that charcoal out and that will give us our lightest tone. So we'll begin at the top here and I'm just going to create a kind of background range of mountains, maybe snow covered mountains. So we can use the edge of our plastic eraser as a drawing tool, the sharper the better, and just start to lift out the silhouette of the mountains and we'll drag some of that light tone down to create rifts and ridges and valleys if your eraser starts to get a little bit clogged with charcoal, do give it a wipe because uh, what will happen is you won't be able to lift any more out if that edge is dirty. And once you've got a, a fairly simple outline that you're happy with, blow off the excess dust or just simply take a piece of kitchen paper and feather it like that so that takes off the eraser dust. So what we'll do next is create a, a little horizon line so maybe we'll have a, a lake in the middle or something like that and again using the sharp edge of the eraser and then we'll maybe have a distant range of trees or something. So we'll take our charcoal, medium size, and we'll just use it to create clumps of trees. Not sharply defined trees, just clumps of trees, because at this distance, or way in the distance, you wouldn't see too much in the way of detail. We'll drag a little bit down. If this is a lake, you will get some reflection in the water, of course, so we'll drag some down into the water. And then, simply using your finger, just soften those shapes off a little bit. Obviously, aerial perspective, which is the effect of the Earth's atmosphere on everything we see around us, means that distant trees will be a little bit greyer, not quite as dark as trees and detail in the foreground. Make sure you can just about see them. If you rubbed a little bit too much off of your finger, add a little bit more, and that should do for our distance. Then now we're ready to create some uh, texture and ripples in the lake. So cutting across with the sharp edge of our eraser. So again, remember, these lines will be very fine. Distant ripples will appear a lot finer, a lot sharper, because they're a lot further away. As we come down to the foreground, then these ripples can get a little bit thicker and a little bit sharper, a little bit lighter in definition. So remember, depth in a painting is created by tonal values. The sharper the tonal values, then the more an object comes towards you, the greyer in tone, the further away it goes. So just continue down to the foreground where our shoreline will be. And again, just take the kitchen paper and just waft off the excess eraser crumbs. Okay, let's have a little bit of a, a shoreline. So in the distance, the shoreline will be not so intense in tone. It'll be lighter in tone as we come down towards the foreground. With it being white, we can imagine this is a snow covered bank on the lake or something like that. Again, just waft off the eraser crumbs and we'll do a similar thing on the other side. So just create simple shapes for the banking coming down to the foreground. Waft off the crumbs. And now we're ready to do some trees that are a little bit closer. So first of all, we'll start back here. Just indicate some tree trunks in the mid distance. Not too heavy, but they should be a slightly darker tone than the, the background trees, of course. And we'll just put some branches and leaves on them. So you can imagine this as a little group of conifers in the mid-distance. Again, not too much detail. So the more detail you put in, the further forward those trees will come. So we make them quite hazy, darkish grey, not too black. And something similar on the other side. And these distant trees, or mid-distant trees, just hanging over the edge of the lake. You see, there's very little definition there. You don't need it for background or mid-distance. And then we'll do some trees in the foreground. Again, if you get any, any dust, just waft it off with your kitchen paper 
If you rub it with your finger, of course, then it's going to uh, smudge. So we don't want that. So let's have a, a nice, stronger tree right in the foreground, using the edge of our stick of charcoal and pressing on a little bit more now because we want this group of trees to be even darker and the same with the branches and of course you could put a little bit more detail in the branches now if you want to so again pressing on a little bit more with the charcoal just to emphasize the fact that they are closer to us and the closer they are of course the more detail you'll see and we can just see the snow bank behind which is that lighter tone again what this does is it forces these trees closer towards us. And we can put some little grasses and maybe some bushes down here too. And something else on this side perhaps. Maybe a single tree or just a couple of trees. And again, add some detail. So remember you can press on a little bit more now. some branches veering off this tree again just to break up the mirror image and again some bushes or maybe even rocks so we can use our charcoal stick to create some shapes of rocks and softer shapes for foreground bushes and so on again just blow off any excess charcoal and then Finally, back with our eraser, we can enhance the ripples in the foreground a little bit more. Make sure that when your eraser gets clogged with charcoal, just to give it a little wipe so you can lift off more of the mid-tone colour that you had to start with. Waft off the excess. It may be an evening sketch, so we can have a, a moon in the background. Use the eraser just to lift out the shape of the moon. And of course, what that will do It'll give us some reflections on the mountains just below the moon. So we'll lift a little bit more with our eraser and also some reflections on the water directly below. And there we have it. A fairly simple way of creating tonal values and depth in a sketch very quickly with a stick of charcoal, an eraser, and some paper towel.